Cantonese, Mandarin. What's the relationship? Why are there so many tones in Cantonese and so few in Mandarin? Stop counting tones. And what about Vietnamese and Thai? Well, I've seen the video that you're just about to see because I just edited it and it is a masterclass in tones, not just for Cantonese, Mandarin, but for all Chinese languages, Vietnamese and Thai and other languages from this area. So by the end of this video, you're getting to be masters of tonal languages. But I know some people watching this just want to get to the meat first and get to the sexy bits. So you'll get the meat throughout the clip, but I'm gonna give you the skinny right now. Now this is from uh, session four in Minecraft, where we do Chinese whispers. And whether you've got a background in Chinese or not, by the end of the class, you're going to have a deep understanding of tones, pronunciation, opinion, and even how characters are built up and how to get the writing into your muscles. But that's Minecraft. Join the Discord group. You'll see the link below, uh, the QR code. Scan that there. You can jump in and join the Minecraft program at J Academy. But anyway, let's get into it. Cantonese built on the um, middle Chinese basic system of um, four tones. So we have ping, level, sheng, um, rising, chu, departing, ru, entering. Now, what do those words mean? Ping just means normal voice. Okay, and I'm using my fingers because traditionally they, they would write them on their fingers. Ping, sheng, chu, ru, like this to remember them. They're important for poetry, but you'll learn that later. So the then you're breaking those ping shang chu yu ru into two sets one that were from the voiced um so you would have z is the voiced version of s d is the voiced version of t now that changed over time but they're basically broken into two registers so in cantonese ping shang chu ru you've got the yin version which are the voiced yang version which are unvoiced and so for the ping if we use ma as a syllable ma Ping, ma, shang. Chu is ma, so ma, 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 and then the entering tone, which means it's clipped at the end. Ma, so ma, ma, yip. Any of these would be entering tones because they're cut off at the end. Um, we don't have those in Mandarin. So you've got the high register, which are the yin in Cantonese, and then you've got a low register. So you've got the ping again. So in the yin, it's ma. Yang is ma. Ma, ma. The word for, um, so si, si, si is to think. Si in Mandarin. And si, si, si. Gan for time. Shi jian. Okay, so si, si. Ma, ma. They're the two different ping ones, yin and yang. Now we have yin and yang for the shang. So we have ma, 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 ma. And then we have the yin and yang for the chu, the departing. Ma, ma. They're just on different levels, very close, but you'll notice that the yang is a notch lower. Ma, ma. And we actually have three entering tones. In Cantonese, we have a difference between short and long. So the short, you will find at the very top, ma, and the very bottom, yang, ma. And then anything with a long vowel, but if it's cut off, so it's this entering tone, or we call it in Thai dead. So for example, the number eight, but, but, you know, it's but is not but. If it was but, it would be but or but. But because it's a long vowel in the center, it's in the middle. There. So these are the tones. Ma, 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 ma. Entering tones, ma, ma, ma. Okay, Mandarin loses the entering tones. All of those just come together. Uh, you notice more modern or northern varieties, they've lost all of this differentiation. And so basically the two um, ping tones, um, the, for the high one stays high, so ma. But then basically anytime you see in Cantonese a tone that is this um, ma, C, si, like in shi jian, si, will turn into this second tone in Mandarin. So in Mandarin, we have ma, 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 ma. So ma, second tone, is the same as the yang ping tone from Cantonese. Ma, um, this rising tone, so sheng tone, number three tone in Mandarin, is either the sheng tone in the yin or the sheng tone in the yang, so the, either of the blue, from the Cantonese will always turn into 
the third tone in Mandarin, and then the uh, leaving tone, the exiting tone, so ma, ma, will usually turn into the fourth tone in Mandarin. So, for example, the word zhen, uh, zhen in Mandarin is the second tone, so that would be this one, so yan in Cantonese. That's how it works. And then Vietnamese is pretty much the same. Look at Cantonese, Vietnamese. So in Vietnamese, we have ma, 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 that we see in Cantonese. The equivalence would be ma, ma, ma. And then the um, entering tone would ma in Cantonese would be ma in Vietnamese. And then the yang from Cantonese would be Ma, ma, ma. Vietnamese equivalents would be ma, ma, ma. And then we have ma, ma, ma. We don't have this ma in Vietnamese, so we only have the ma, ma turns into ma, ma. Check that out. Now, things to notice, have a look at these words. In Vietnamese, you'll see... Um, this interesting thing where s, s, sh, turns into a t or a th. Now, that's not unlike when people lisp in English. So, I've got a big surprise for you. I've got a big surprise for you. I've got a big surprise for you. So, you see, it's a natural thing for the mouth for s's to move forward to the teeth and turn into t's. So, the word s, 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 c, c, c in um, Cantonese, c, Mandarin, s, Vietnamese, t, you can see the relationship there. And the other one here, you've got, so, for time, that's this one. In Mandarin, in Cantonese, is C, C, Sh. Vietnamese, now this is Sino Vietnamese, so Chinese Vietnamese, T or T. So you can see they've come from two different points into Vietnamese, but again, you get this sort of S to T shift. And you can see them down here. They pretty much follow the same um, patterns. So the response is, yes, there is a relationship. To really understand it, you need to go back to Middle Chinese and see what happens with the tone there. And to understand where the tones came from, Middle Chinese, you have to understand Old Chinese. Minecraft, we go through it all, but stay tuned because now you're about to watch a masterclass in tones. Take it away, Stu. What is the relationship between the tones in Mandarin and Cantonese? and any other Chinese language for that matter. Is there a relationship between the tones in Chinese and other tonal languages like Thai and Vietnamese? Well, this week in Minecraft, we actually uh, went through the, this is week four, and the topic was Chinese whispers. And so we actually went into this, even if for people who didn't have any grounding in Chinese whatsoever, actually that was probably a help um, because you didn't have anything interfering. And we actually looked at what tones were, because actually in Chinese originally, in Old Chinese, um, there were no tones, and these developed. We learned why and how they developed in uh, our Minecraft class. But I'm going to share with you today um, some little hacks that you can look at between Mandarin, if you already know Mandarin, to learn Cantonese and other um, Chinese languages, but also, especially if you know Cantonese or Vietnamese or even Thai, um, to make learning Mandarin or other Chinese languages easier. Now, this kind of happens naturally for a lot of Chinese Singaporeans, Chinese Malay, uh, Malaysians, because there are so many dialects and you just slip in and out of dialects. But there's actually a science to it and there's something going on there. It's not a perfect science, um, but there's a science to it. So let me share with you now. Okay, so traditionally in... Um, Middle Chinese. So we had Old Chinese, Middle Chinese. So Middle Chinese, you had tones. And these evolved from throw positions. But they would say that you would count them on your finger. So the if you look at these notches on your finger, this would be level or ping. This would here would be shang. Actually, back there it was shang, but shang. This one here would be chu. And this would be ru. So ping means level. Shang means rising up. Chu means departing or going out. And ru means entering. Okay, so what this meant, this was normal voice. Ping was normal voice. Shang. That was the voice uh, pulling up. 
Okay. Chu. Ah. That was the voice pushing, usually from pushing air out, traditionally from what used to be at the end of words that developed into that departing tone. Um, there was actually, an, used to be an H as an affix. And so, ah. And so the voice would open. So that was the departing tone. And ru. Up. Up. At. There would be, that would be called stopped. So ping, shang, chu, ru, four um, different tones or throat position. You say the word tone and you just think of pitch, but it's actually throat positions, sheng diao. And then they were broken up into two other classes. You had ones with voice. So for example, this is what voice versus unvoiced. Z, voiced, s, unvoiced, t, unvoiced, d. So every voice sound has an unvoiced pair. And what they found is if you your voice kicks in, it knocks your actual voice into a different register by the time it gets to the vowel. So you have, if you have a look there, you can see just that uh, you can see these little things look like a C hooking on. And they, especially when they were when you were doing um, Chinese poetry, you'd need things rhyming tone wise as well. So um, same tones or throat positions would go with each other according to their poetry patterns. And so this little symbol here meant. Um, ping and with a stroke under it would differentiate whether it was yin or yang. Yin being the dark would be the voiced one and yang would be the light or unvoiced version. Okay, so tones were throat positions and throat positions would have a voiced version of them and an unvoiced version. Okay, so for Cantonese, it's actually fantastic because they still keep all of those original ping, shang, chu, ru, and then they keep the yin version voiced, yang version unvoiced. Now, what happened in Cantonese is that the voiced versions all got knocked up into this higher register and the yang, the unvoiced, all got knocked into this lower register. So, for example, um, and I'll, I'll just jump in here to, I've, I've got them mapped out uh, in Vim for you. Okay, so this is my Vim here. And if you want to learn how to use Vim, come into Minecraft. You can come into our Discord um, server as well. It's very active. Um, but, so we have the tone. This is ping. This, this symbol here, ping, means level. And this, this is yang. And this is yin. Yin, yang. So what happens in Cantonese, um, your, let, let's just start with the darker ones because as you see with the darker ones, they're in the higher register. So what does this top one sound like? So if I had these two words uh, here, uh, sorry, these, okay, so have a listen. Now the beautiful thing on Vim is that we can pipe anything into it or out of Vim into anything else on my computer. So I'm just going to use the Max Say program and have a listen to this. This is Cantonese for flower. Fa. And this is Cantonese for to think. Si. So you've got fa, si, fa, si. So that's this one here. Fa, si. Fa, C, the pink one. Don't worry about the orange one yet. Um, they're the entering tones and they're basically stopped sounds. So instead of Fa, it would be Fa. But we'll have a look at that in a moment. So let's have a look at this next one. So we have number two, the blue one. This is the Shang, so rising. And so it goes from, so if this is the lowest point in your voice here, ah, uh, we call that number one. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, ah, highest point in my voice, ah, lowest point in, point in my voice in normal speech. So it starts around the middle and goes up to about there. So this would be, what's the word we're using here? Um, this one here. So li shi in Mandarin, shi meaning history. So this is si, 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 fa, si. C, C, have a look here. C. C. Oh, sorry, wrong. Here we go, this one. So have a look here. C. C. 
Let's listen to it again. Sí. Now, so let's have a look at the next one. We have the departing. So, ping shang chu, chu, departing tone. So, the departing tone is pretty much level, just in the center. So, that would be C, C. So, we have C, C, C. So, let's have a look here. So, the departing, yin, that's departing, yin, would sound like this. C. C, right in the middle of your voice. Let's listen to it again. C. Got it? And then finally, we have the entering tone, which is cut off at the end. That's what entering tone means, ru sheng. Now, Mandarin doesn't have any entering tones left. They all, um, there's actually no final hard endings in anything in Mandarin. And so the entering tone just became one of the other three. So, but let's listen to what the entering tone will sound like for this one. Instead of C, it would be sick. So here we go here. Entering tone. Now, the thing in Mandarin, in Cantonese, sorry, you have a differentiation between long and short vowels. So we have sec and sec. Sec, sec, sec is this long one, but sec, sec, sec meaning to know, like ren shi. Sec, have a listen. Sec. 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 Okay. As opposed to the long. Se. Se. You hear the difference in length? Se. So basically what happened, if it was a short um, entering yang tone, so yin tone, it would be up high here. If it was long, it would be down low. It would be in the middle. So have a listen here. If it was the yin short um, entering, it would be up high. Si. And if it was the yin long entering, it would be in the middle. Si. So that's the high register of the voice, the yin ones, and then the yang is in the low register of the voice in Cantonese. So we have um, the same one. So ping instead of um, si, now what happens is you follow this pink line here. So C, C. So this word here, let's go now to the um, young versions. Actually, these are around the wrong way. Let me just change them around. Done. Okay. So now they're the right way around. So this one, the young version would be C, C, meaning time. C. Let's listen to it. C. Hear that? C. C. S going, starting low and going down lower. C. 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 Now the next one, we are again, so we've got the ping shang. So the shang is the rising one, but it's in the lower register. So this one would be C. C. Let's have a look here. So we want to go to this version here. Okay, so let's have a look here. These ones are... Now, in Mandarin, it's shi, but actually in Cantonese, this was originally a rising tone. So this should be C, 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 as opposed to C in the high register. C. Both of them are rising, but one's in a high register. C. And one's in a low register. C. And then we have the departing tone. So here the departing tone was here. So that was C, C. And now our departing tone here isn't that far off. It's just one notch down, but it's, a, it's lower in the voice. So follow this green one, that would be C. So let's have a look. Let's listen to this one. C. C. Okay, so the first one we heard C, this is the departing tone, follow the green line. So that would be C, C in the middle of the voice. I'll just go back and give you a refresher. So that was the departing yin, C, middle of the voice. C. C. 
And now this one will be lower down in the voice and still departing. So this is the green line in the young. C. Can you hear the difference? You've got this one will be higher. C. C. Okay, C, 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 C. And then finally, our entering tone. So originally we had the sick, sick, sick. You'll notice that if it's a entering tone with a long vowel in Cantonese, it'll be in that middle part. And then for the, um, the young version, it will be down the very bottom of your voice. So sick, 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 sick. Sick, sick. So this one would be pronounced so sick, fun to eat rice. Sick, sick, sick. Got it? Sick, sick. So let me just read through these again. I'll pronounce them here. So let's go through the yin, yin tones. C, C, C. Sick, and then the young. C, 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 sick, 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 sick. Got it? So we have those tones. These are actually maintaining the original uh, Middle Chinese tone classifications. Um, th or throat classification, but you can see it's actually in the throat. Now, what happens in Mandarin is basically, well, we don't have any of these sick, sick, sick. We don't cut off at the end, sick, see. So we get rid of all of the entering tones. And basically the two ping ones we still maintain. So in Cantonese, this would be called tone one, tone two, tone three, um, tone four, tone five, tone six. And then this is, they just keep this as one, three, six, because they're at those pitch levels. But in Mandarin, we have tone one, two, three, four. So in Mandarin, we keep both ping ones, but they take diff different contours in Mandarin. So for example, C to think in Cantonese becomes C, 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 pretty much the same. Um, but whenever you see this, um, yang ping tone in Cantonese, so C, it will usually turn, it most often turn into the second tone in Mandarin. So shi meaning time. Shi, shi jian, shi. Si, si gan, shi, si, shi. Don't believe my voice? Let's hear it. So I'm going to play this one. Okay, so that means time. Shi in Mandarin. Shi. And in Cantonese, C. Mandarin, Shi. Cantonese, C. Got it? And so again, in Mandarin, Shi, Si, Shi, 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 or Si, 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 Si. So the, all of the rising ones in Cantonese just turn into the third turn in Mandarin. Um, there are a few exceptions, but in general, you can be have a pretty sure guess that if it's one of these rising ones, so either C or C, it's going to turn into number three tone in uh, Mandarin. And then usually any of the uh, exiting tones, so the Chu Sheng in Cantonese, so C or C is going to turn to C si or Shi. So from this high level, Shi, Si, down. So let's have a listen. Let's have a look at these exiting tones. Mandarin. Shi. 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 Now, uh, this one, so um, kao shi, to examine. Shi. Pronounce the same, but listen to the difference in Cantonese. Si. 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 So originally in Cantonese, there were different tones, and by the time they got to Mandarin, they just melded into this one here. And so this is pretty cool. We're just doing these with two and you can see that Mandarin, it's actually a more modern, it's a more developed sort of tone system where things have melded in together. The further south you go, 
um, in China, you see more of the richness of the tone still very similar to in ancient times, keeping those tone groups. But it's not just Chinese. Let's have a look at Vietnamese. So if we have a look at the Vietnamese tones, we have the same. So um, I've actually give them um, different names here. But supposing I was using on ma, we would have the ngang tone. So this would be ma, 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 ma. This is the um, pink. So the, the normal tone is just a bit higher than the normal um, relaxed voice. So instead of ma, it'd be ma. It's up on about this fourth line. So that's your ping sheng um, yin that comes from Cantonese. So Cantonese, ma. Vietnamese, ma. Um, the rising sheng turns into the hoi tone in Vietnamese. So um, ma, ma, ma. The exiting tone in the yin category for Cantonese. So that would be ma Cantonese turns into ma, ma. That's the sac tone. And then the um, entering tone, so the stopped uh, tone or stopped syllables in Vietnamese, which in Cantonese would have been um, mak, turn into mak. So you can see Cantonese and Vietnamese actually very, very similar. This one drops down a little bit, but it's very close. And then let's have a look at um, Cantonese versus Vietnamese for the young ones. So again, you can see these have all shifted down um, to that bottom level of the voice as well. And let's have a look. So the ping, so this would be ma, ma in Cantonese. And in Vietnamese, ma, ma. That's the uh, huyen tone. So ma. Cantonese for the young, so the low rising tone, ma, ma, would turn into, in Vietnamese, ma. Ma. Now, an interesting thing here, this is called the na tone. And in, let me zoom in here. In Vietnamese, you can see this dot underneath the A. So that's representing that tone. Vietnamese, you really notice that tones are not just pitch. Their length, their throat position, their throat quality. So where this would be ma, ma, you can hear it sort of lasting on. With this dot underneath, it just kills it. So ma, ma, ma. Whereas in Cantonese, it would just be ma, ma, but Vietnamese, ma. So the tone is actually the length and the quality of the voice too. And then finally, uh, oh, sorry, the rising tone. Now, this is an interesting one because in Cantonese, I'll just zoom out a little bit. So in Cantonese, ma, ma, but in Vietnamese, we've got what's called a broken tone. So it actually ma, 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 ma. So it starts here, and then your voice basically gets a yodel in it, ma, until glottal stop, and then comes back in up higher, ma, ma. Now, when you go down south, this is northern Vietnamese, when you go down south, that merges into this, and you don't hear this break in the voice. Um, southern tones are, are slightly different, a couple of them, just like happened, what happened between Cantonese and Mandarin, similar things happen between northern and southern Vietnamese, and central Vietnamese is another question. Um, but that's pretty cool, isn't it? It's that same operating system. Oh, and so when you learn pinyin in Mandarin, this is this um, sound matrix that we learn in, in J Academy that was 3,000 years old. This is the basis of all index scripts. But what is So the actual Chinese follow this same system that Thai is built around. So let's have a look. That's the Devanagari, so that's the base, the base index system, and Thai is on that same system. And so basically, Chinese follows the same patterns. But not only that, check this out. We have the same ping, shang, chu, ru, long, ru, short. So uh, we call these dead. Entering tones in um, Chinese are dead syllables in Thai. And we have exactly the same. So this one would be the yang, qing yin. So this is with the no voice and zhuo yin is voiced. And we have another one called sai yin. And this is um, with the stopped throat in the beginning. So I'll give you an example. This is ka, no voice. And this originally would have been ga, ga in old Thai, but that voicing has been lost now. So it's ka, so sounds the same, but this drops down lower and then 
ka ka my throat's closed so ka 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 but basically it's pretty much the same um tone system very similar to what we see in cantonese old chinese and even modern mandarin um in thai it's just rendered differently in the writing system um and in thai the tone markers unlike vietnamese where each tone marker marks an actual tone the, the actual um pitch contour in thai these tone markers actually mark what originally the category whether it was um the ping shang chu ru and so even though in modern thai the contours may change according to what tone marker back in the day in the 1200s in sukho thai thai these were actually consistent very similar to what we see in vietnamese now or the ping shang chu ru uh, mark as we see in Chinese. But anyway, you can see here, it doesn't matter which dialect you're in. I'm using Visi data here. Again, if you come to Minecraft, you'll learn how to use this. This is awesome. So we can learn how to use data to build our learning resources. Um, but these are all the Mandarin. I'll just hit there to get a frequency table. These are how many Mandarin dialects, Yue dialects, and these are just general. There are even more than that. But we can, if I'll just go back out of that, you can see this is just the conversion. So as long as you can read, read these pitch graphs, uh, one is low voice, ah, it's high voice. You can actually, if, as long as you know one of them, you can map what you know to the dialect or the province that you're visiting and you'll be able to get pretty close to the way the locals pronounce those words in their dialect. I hope this has been a, a fun enlightenment on uh, tones for you. If you want to learn more, come to Minecraft. Our Discord group is awesome. We're uh, We've got uh, people from all over the world, all different languages, um, different channels for different languages, and even things like this tech, IT, Linux, everything, all the tools you use to learn language, uh, even radio uh, and Morse code in there, because that's a kind of another language. Um, but come to Minecraft, Minecraft Discord group, and join in our Minecraft class, and you'll actually get a master class in all of this over 11 weeks. So what dialect of Chinese are you going to learn next? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Stuart J. Raj. Stay tuned.